Unit 4 Personality and Life Page 39 Exercise C Sound Bites Read and listen to a conversation between two colleagues. What's all that racket? Carla, yelling at Phil. She's really ticked off at him. Oh, Carla's always ticked off about something or other. She needs to get hold of herself. What's she so angry about now? Well, it seems she confided in Phil and... Big mistake. Phil can't keep a secret. Everyone knows what a gossip he is. So, what did she tell him? Shame on you. Well, she told him she'd been offered a new job and that she was thinking of taking it. No kidding. Where? Hey, I don't feel comfortable talking behind her back. Now that it's out in the open, why don't you just ask her yourself? Page Exercise A. Conversation Snapshot. Read and listen. Notice the conversation strategies. You know what my problem is? What? I'm a perfectionist. Nothing is ever good enough for me. It's a pretty negative attitude to have. Really? I'm just the opposite. I don't think I'm critical enough. Wouldn't it be nice if we could reach some kind of happy medium? Page 40 and intonation practice. Listen again to the conversation. Repeat in the pauses. You know what my problem is? What? I'm a perfectionist. Nothing is ever good enough for me. It's a pretty negative attitude to have. Really? I'm just the opposite. I don't think I'm critical enough. Wouldn't it be nice if we could reach some kind of happy medium? Page 40. Bring oneself with others. Listen and repeat. That's my problem, too. I'm like that myself. Me too. I'm just the opposite. I'm not like that. Not me. Page 40. Size B. Vocabulary. Problematic attitudes and behaviors. Read and listen. Be a perfectionist. Be unable to say no. Have a negative attitude. Wait until the last minute. Take on more than one can handle. Overreact to things. Now listen again and repeat in the pauses. Be a perfectionist. Be unable to say no. Have a negative attitude. Wait until the last minute. Take on more than one can handle. Handle. Overreact to things. Page to size C. Listening. Associate words and ideas. Listen to the descriptions of workshops from the Executive Training Center. Then complete the statements about each workshop using the vocabulary. Good morning. 
I'm Rosanna McKenzie from the Executive Training Center, and I'd like to tell you about some exciting morning workshops we offer that will begin next week. These professional development workshops will help you be a more successful manager, and they will provide you with useful skills that will add value to your life outside of work. Each one-hour workshop begins at 7 a.m., and since we know how busy you are, a continental breakfast will always be available. Now to the workshops. On Monday, join motivational psychologist Dr. Margaret Smith to learn how to stop putting off until tomorrow what you can do today. Dr. Smith is a lively and, enterta lively and entertaining presenter, and you can expect lots of audience participation. Are you the kind of person who finds it impossible to live with imperfections of any kind? If even small mistakes drive you crazy, then Tuesday's workshop may be just what you need. CEO Stephen Cobb shows you when and how to lower your standards and accept less than the best. You can learn to work and live happily in an imperfect world. Wednesday's workshop is for those of you who always try to do too much. If you're constantly accepting assignments from other people and then finding you're overwhelmed and unable to meet your deadlines, then this is for you. With the help of Dr. John Hill, you'll learn to live with your own limitations and avoid taking on more than you can handle. On Thursday, psychologist Dr. Ann Hammond shows you how to keep your cool under trying circumstances. Learn how to get your emotions under control and face everyday problems calmly and confidently. You'll be better equipped to cope with anything and everything after Dr. Hammond's class, we promise. And on Friday, a special workshop for negative people who just can't seem to see the sunny side of things. A simple five-step program will show you how to focus on the positive and enjoy success in your work and happiness in your relationships. Page exercise D. Listening. Draw conclusions. Listen to the descriptions again. Which workshops do you think will be most and least effective in helping people change? Explain your reasons. Good morning. I'm Rosanna McKenzie from the Executive Training Center, and I'd like to tell you about some exciting morning workshops we offer that will begin next week. These professional development workshops will help you be a more successful manager, and they will provide you with useful skills that will add value to your life outside of work. Each one-hour workshop begins at 7 a.m., and since we know how busy you are, a continental breakfast will always be available. Now to the workshops. On Monday, join motivational psychologist Dr. Margaret Smith to learn how to stop putting off until tomorrow what you can do today. Dr. Smith is a lively and entertaining presenter, entertaining presenter, and you can expect lots of audience participation. Are you the kind of person who finds it impossible to live with imperfections of any kind? If even small mistakes drive you crazy, then Tuesday's workshop may be just what you need. CEO Stephen Cobb shows you when and how to lower your standards and accept less than the best. You can learn to work and live happily in an imperfect world. Wednesday's workshop is for those of you who always try to do too much. If you're constantly accepting assignments from other people and then finding you're overwhelmed and unable to meet your deadlines, then this is for you. With the help of Dr. John Hill, you'll learn to live with your own limitations and avoid taking on more than you can handle. On Thursday, psychologist Dr. Ann Hammond shows you how to keep your cool under trying circumstances. Learn how to get your emotions under control and face everyday problems calmly and confidently. You'll be better equipped to cope with anything and everything after Dr. Hammond's class, we promise. And on Friday, a special workshop for negative people who just can't seem to see the sunny side of things. A simple five-step program will show you how to focus on the positive and enjoy success in your work and happiness in your relationships. Page 42, size A. Grammar Snapshot. Read and listen to the article. Notice the use of the subjunctive. Easy ways to cope with stress. Everyone has stress. 
While it may not be possible to avoid stress entirely, it is important that you be aware of rising stress levels. And when you feel yourself getting tense, there are some simple techniques you can use to lower your stress level fast. According to Dr. Robert Sharp, the founder of the Life Skills Stress Management Center, the first step is to do nothing. It's essential that one begin and end each day by taking a minute or two to consciously relax. He suggests that after the alarm clock wakes you up in the morning, and again, just before bedtime, you spend a few moments relaxing all the muscles of your body. And if you feel yourself getting stressed out during the day, slow your breathing down for five minutes by taking long, deep, bre long, deep breaths. Dr. Sharp also suggests that you think about people and things you love. Just as thinking about someone you are angry with can cause stress, focusing your attention on a photo of a loved one can reduce it. When counseling a patient facing a daunting task, psychologist Elise Labbe recommends that he or she listen to soothing music. Anything from concertos to country music, whatever feels the most calming to you is the type of music most likely to help ease stress. Laughter is another effective stress buster. Health and medical writer Peter Jarrett recommends that the stress sufferer keep something funny nearby. It could be a favorite comic strip torn out of the newspaper or a funny card from a family member or a friend. Turn to this every so often during your day. Not all of these techniques will work for everyone, but finding one or two that work for you can help you keep your cool when life starts to get out of control. Page 44. Desize A. Vocabulary. Expressions related to anger. Read and listen. Hold it back. Keep it in. Let it go. Shrug it off. Let off steam. Lose one's temper. Make an issue out of something. Say what's on one's mind. Take it out on someone. Tell someone off. Now listen again and repeat in the pauses. Hold it back. Keep it in. Let it go. Shrug it off. Let off steam. Lose one's temper. Make an issue out of something. Say what's on one's mind. Take it out on someone. Tell someone off. Page 44. Exercise C. Listening. Infer information. Listen to an interview with Michael Chen. I'm here with Michael Chen, who is from Taiwan and we're discussing cultural differences in the way people express anger. Michael, is there any way to generalize about people in Taiwan? I mean, are there strong cultural traditions about expressing anger? I've actually heard that it's unacceptable to show anger there. Is that true? Well, generally, I think it's very unusual for someone to express anger toward an authority figure, say a parent or a superior at work. That's just not considered appropriate. Speaking for myself, if I got mad at my boss, I certainly wouldn't lose my temper. As a matter of fact, I probably wouldn't even raise my voice. I might let off a little steam by talking with a colleague about what, colleague about what happened, but I'd try not to let anything show to my boss, I mean. I'd definitely keep it in. What about with friends and colleagues? Are people in Taiwan always so controlled about their anger? Of course not. I wouldn't want to suggest that everyone is the same, but I think we are a little slower to anger than people in many other places. We tend to let things go for a while. You really have to be provoked before you show it. Let's say you're meeting a friend for lunch and he's late. You probably wouldn't say anything. 
But if it happened all the time, well, eventually you wouldn't be able to hold it back. You'd have to say what's on your mind. So, in other words, you're less likely to make an issue out of something. Right. Things have to be very bad before you'll have it out with someone, right? Right. But even then, you wouldn't really explode. I think that kind of thing is very rare among people who know each other. People are more subdued in expressing their anger. You'd raise your voice, sure, but not as much. You'd say what's on your mind, but really tell someone off? No, I can't imagine someone doing that. What about when people don't know each other, like with complete strangers? For example, when someone cuts you off while you're driving. Ah, road rage. That's one situation where you might not hold back. When it comes to nasty drivers, it's no different in Taiwan than anywhere else in the world. Some people become enraged, and they show it. No holds barred. But what about you? Me? I might get mad, but I wouldn't do anything about it. Now listen again and check the correct statement, applying the vocabulary. I'm here with Michael Chen, who is from Taiwan, and we're discussing cultural differences in the way people express anger. Michael, is there any way to generalize about people in Taiwan? I mean, are there strong cultural traditions about expressing anger? I've actually heard that it's unacceptable to show anger there. Is that true? Well, generally, I think it's very unusual for someone to express anger toward an authority figure, say a parent or a superior at work. That's just not considered appropriate. Speaking for myself, if I got mad at my boss, I certainly wouldn't lose my temper. As a matter of fact, I probably wouldn't even raise my voice. I might let off a little steam by talking with a colleague about what happened, but I'd try not to let anything show to my boss. I mean, I'd definitely keep it in. What about with friends and colleagues? Are people in Taiwan always so controlled about their anger? Of course not. I wouldn't want to suggest that everyone is the same, but I think we are a little slower to anger than people in many other places. We tend to let things go for a while. You really have to be provoked before you show it. Let's say you're meeting a friend for lunch and he's late. You probably wouldn't say anything, but if it happened all the time, well, eventually you wouldn't be able to hold it back. You'd have to say what's on your mind. So, in other words, you're less likely to make an issue out of something. Right. Things have to be very bad before you'll have it out with someone, right? Right. But even then, you wouldn't really explode. I think that kind of thing is very rare among people who know each other. People are more subdued in expressing their anger. You'd raise your voice, sure, but not as much. You'd say what's on your mind, but really tell someone off? No, I can't imagine someone doing that. What about when people don't know each other, like with complete strangers? For example, when someone cuts you off while you're driving. Ah, road rage. That's one situation where you might not hold back. When it comes to nasty drivers, it's no different in Taiwan than anywhere else in the world. Some people become enraged and they show it. No holds barred. But what about you? Me? I might get mad, but I wouldn't do anything about it. Page forty-six, exercise B, reading. Read and listen to the article. A hectic life downsized. On paper, Donna Paxton lived a picture-perfect life. She was a successful executive at a large corporation. She lived in a beautiful, spacious home with her husband, also a busy professional, and their two children. Although Paxton was managing to juggle all of her responsibilities at home and at work. She increasingly felt that she was unable to give either her job or her family the time each deserved, and this made her very unhappy. Paxton realized that she would have to make a choice between having more money and having more time, time to spend with her two daughters, to contribute to her community, and to relax. I had to decide what was more important to me, she says. Making lots of money at a job, lots of money at a job that no longer inspired me, 
or being part of my children's lives. So Paxton made the decision to simplify her life. She quit her high-paying corporate job and took a less stressful job at a non-profit organization in her community. Because Paxton took a significant reduction in salary, her family learned to make do with less, shop more wisely, eat fewer dinners out, giving them more family time around the dinner table, and reduce spending on unnecessary items. Paxton is still busy, but she is more satisfied and in control of her life. Simplifying my life has made a big difference, she says. I'm no longer stressed out and thinking about work when I should be having fun with my kids. I work fewer hours so I can be involved in my children's school. I have time to exercise and I'm healthier. Downsizing has brought our family closer together. Want to downsize your life? Donna Paxton simplified her life by making a huge change. But there are many small changes you can make in your daily routine that will save money, time, and energy. Make a list of the values that are really important to you. Is it time with your family? Making money? Being active in your community? It makes sense to focus on doing a few things well instead of stretching yourself too thin. Cut out activities that aren't consistent with your values. Delegate when possible. If you routinely say, it's faster to do this myself than to tell someone else what to do, try delegating anyway. You may be surprised. Guard your time as carefully as your money. You can always make more money, but time spent is gone forever. Rather than struggling with a home repair yourself, hire someone to do the job for you. Learn to say no. When faced with requests for your time, don't commit yourself when you would rather spend that time on something more important to you. Make sure to say no politely but firmly. For example, I'm sorry, but I just don't have the time. Page 40. Exercise D. Vocabulary. Collocations with make. Find these expressions with make in the article. With a partner, paraphrase each sentence containing the expressions. Make someone happy. Make someone nervous. Make someone crazy. Make a choice between. Make a decision to. Make do with. Make a difference. Make a change. Make sense to. Make sure to. Now listen again and repeat in the pauses. Make someone happy. Make someone nervous. Make someone. Make someone crazy. Make a choice between. Make a decision to. Make do with. Make a difference. Make a change. Make sense to. Make sure to. Page four. Exercise A. Listening. Listen to three people describe their problems. Speaker one. There are so many sources of stress in my work that I don't even know where to begin. Forget about avoiding it. That would be impossible. But there is one technique I learned in a workshop the company gave that actually has helped a bit. When the stress really starts getting to me, I take a five or ten minute walk at lunchtime. That really helps me loosen up and get away from things for a moment. It makes a big difference, believe me. Speaker 2 uh, Sometimes I feel totally burned out. I mean, I know it's causing it. 
uh, I'm always taking on more than I can handle, but I still haven't been able to figure out a solution. Last month, I decided to start asking other people to give me a hand. It worked pretty well for the first two or three days, but little, days, but little by little, I began taking on more and more work, and before I knew it, I was overwhelmed again. I guess it's my nature. I don't think I have a cure for it. Speaker 3 It's a little embarrassing to admit, but I have a bit of a problem with my temper. I mean, at work, I never show my feelings. If someone makes me angry, I usually just hold it in. But when I get home, that's another story. My kids are great kids, but when they do something wrong, I sometimes completely lose my temper and start yelling at them. The thing is, I know it's really about what happened at work. I'm just taking it out on them. Anyway, I wasn't happy about my behavior with my kids, so I went to a workshop on anger management. Not that long ago, actually. I think it really helped. They suggested finding a way to let off a little steam when I'm angry, so I've taken up aerobics three times a week. It helps me think through what's been bugging me, and then I can just let it go. By the time I'm with my kids again, I have a whole new perspective on things. Now listen again and complete the chart. Listen a third time if necessary to check your answers. Speaker 1 There are so many sources of stress in my work that I don't even know where to begin. Forget about avoiding it. That would be impossible. But there is one technique I learned in a workshop the company gave that actually has helped a bit. When the stress really starts getting to me, I take a 5 or 10 minute walk at lunchtime. That really helps me loosen up and get away from things for a moment. It makes a big difference, believe me. Speaker 2 uh, Sometimes I feel totally burned out. I mean, I know it's causing it. I'm always taking on more than I can handle, but I still haven't been able to figure out a solution. Last month, I decided to start asking other people to give me a hand. It worked pretty well for the first two or three days, but little by little, I began taking on more and more work, and before I knew it, I was overwhelmed again. I guess it's my nature. I don't think I have a cure for it. Speaker 3 it's a little embarrassing to admit, but I have a bit of a problem with my temper. I mean, at work, I never show my feelings. If someone makes me angry, I usually just hold it in. But when I get home, that's another story. My kids are great kids, but when they do something wrong, I sometimes completely lose my temper and start yelling at them. The thing is, I know it's really about what happened at work. I'm just taking it out on them. Anyway, I wasn't happy about my behavior with my kids, so I went to a workshop on anger management. Not that long ago, actually. I think it really helped. They suggested finding a way to let off a little steam when I'm angry, so I've taken up aerobics three times a week. It helps me think through what's been bugging me, and then I can just let it go. By the time I'm with my kids again, I have a whole new perspective on things. End of Unit 4 End of CD 2